to Church City first. We are so excited you're here. It is Superhero Sunday, which means we get to celebrate our Champions Club and Illuminators. Come on, get those hands together. Waking up knowing there's a reason. All my dreams come alive. Life is for living with you. Made my decision. and you haven't heard of our amazing Champions Club and Illuminators Ministry. It is our beautiful, beautiful ministry to individuals with special needs, and they have our heart. Our church would not be the same without them, and we are so, so grateful. This is our son, Paxton. Can you say hi? No. Oh. You know, when I was rehearsing in my mind today what you were going to say, that's exactly what it was. Hey, listen, guess what? I love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love you. Oh. 
Oh, you're so silly. All right, church, um, what an honor it is to host such amazing people. And you know, there is some incredible, incredible people who are also here with us today. Those are our first time guests. If it is your first time here with us today, at City First Church, we are so honored that you are here, whether you're joining us online or in person. And I'm gonna be, you're gonna hear this like four times today too. Our leadership college students are here. Let's give it up for their first Sunday. Amazing, what an incredible opportunity to be a part of a life-changing church with so many incredible people a part of it. So church, can we give our champions, even though they're not up really here anymore, but let them hear you say, we love you. Well church, you can stay on your feet. We're gonna continue to sing together today. If you're with us online, welcome. You're in the right place. Turn up that volume. We're gonna sing about the faithfulness of our God. And as we do that, we call that worship around here. We do that to remind ourselves of who our God is and who we can be because of Him. Come on, let's sing together today. Christ is my firm foundation.
on your faithfulness today. Oh God, in a world that's always changing, you stay the same. You remain and you never fail. Jesus, thank you, Father. Come on, sing it with me. Your name is higher. And your name is higher. Your name is greater. All my hope is in you. And your word unfailing, your promise unshaken. All my hope is in you. Sing it again today. You know, each and every week there are people who submit prayer requests on our app, and we are, we are faithful to pray for those. We give those to a prayer team and we pray for them. But we also, sometimes in service, take time to actually bring these requests before the Lord together corporately because we don't just gather today as a church just to have church. We gather to encounter the living God who promises to be in our midst when we gather in his name. And this is what I know, there is not one person within the sound of my voice, either in this room or watching online, who is untouched by the brokenness of this world. And so whether it be a financial need, a, a healing, a physical need that you have, maybe it's a struggle in a relationship, I don't know what you are carrying today but we wanna take a moment and we wanna lift those requests up to the Lord together because we're in this together. Do you know that you don't just walk with Jesus alone, you walk with a community of people who walk with you. And so no matter where you're at, whether you're at home in your living room or whether you are in a physical building, if you have a need today that you would like us to lift up, you're not gonna have to share it with anybody, but this is just your way of saying, Jen, I have a need today. I have a need today. Just slip up your hand right where you're at. Hands up everywhere. You wanna just look around for a moment and see if there's someone around you. And if we could just do this, we could just extend a hand to those who are, are lifting their hands today. We wanna lift up these needs today. So let's pray together, church. Heavenly Father, we come boldly into your presence today in the name of Jesus. Your word is very clear 
that we can come with our needs, God. And no matter what individuals are carrying today, God, you know. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your peace that passes all understanding would surround each and every one of them. God, I pray where there are relationship struggles, God, we ask that the Holy Spirit of God would intervene, that you would give wisdom beyond our understanding. God, where there are physical needs, God, needs of healing, Lord Jesus, we ask in the name of Jesus that the power of God would just intervene in this situation, Lord God. We pray for financial struggles, God. Those who are, are wondering where their needs are going to be met, God, we thank you that you own the cattle on a thousand hill God hills and there is no need that is too big for you God we pray that you would open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open God to provide for the needs of your people God we thank you that we serve a powerful God a God who walked where we walk a God who understands us and so we commit these needs to you today we love you, we thank you that we can trust you even when it doesn't seem possible. We trust you today. We pray all of these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus and everybody said, amen. You can give Jesus one more huge hand clap, amen. You guys may go ahead and have a seat. We had a jam-packed service today already, huh? How many of you glad to be in church today? I'm glad to be in church today. Well, for those of you who have been around for any amount of time at all, you know that this is the part of the service where we actually continue in our worship by bringing God His ties and bringing our offerings. And to participate in the giving today, whether in the room or online, you're gonna see that there's instructions on the screen and there's a bunch of different ways that you can give, that's whether online or through the app. And if you haven't downloaded the New City First Church app, it's an amazing resource for you guys. Seriously, download it. It's an incredible, incredible resource for you guys that we have worked months and months and months on. And so, and if you're in a physical building and you have a physical gift um, on your way out today, you're gonna see that there's offering boxes at the doors and you can drop those off. And I was actually thinking about this idea of of giving and I was thinking about how absolutely what a beautiful picture today is of God and what he's building because even with Champions Club and Superhero Sunday can I just tell you this church we believe our we're following the directions of Jesus to create a home where everyone belongs even when you walked in a physical door there was like a little tagline that said you belong here you belong here, and we all belong here. Jesus is for everyone, and he wants a relationship with each and every person, and he is building a home, and I love this scripture. It says this, it says, God is building a home. Hmm. He's using us all, nudge your neighbor and say, all. That's you, that's you. Irrespective of how we got here and what he is building. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation long ago. Now he's using you fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone that holds it all together. We see it taking shape day after day. A holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple which God is quite at home. God is building a home, and if you're wondering why we give, it's because, guess what, building a home costs, amen? <laughs> it costs investment. It costs time, it costs treasure. But guess what? The home that God is building is beautiful and it is for everyone and it changes our lives because people meet Jesus in the house. And so as you give today, church, I just wanna remind you, we give because God is building a home and he partners with his people. I don't understand it all the way, but he partners with us as he builds. So let's give generously today. Why don't we go ahead and close our eyes and I'll bless the offering. Jesus, thank you so much that we get the honor to give in these next few moments to what you are doing. We thank you, Lord God, that you are building a house brick by brick and it's you, you are using each and every one of us. God, we love you. We thank you for what you are up to at City First Church. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it lightly. We love you. Bless each gift and each giver today. 
in Jesus name and everybody said amen amen why don't you guys go ahead and turn your attention to the screens we'll check out all that is happening around here here at City First Church we love God love people and love life we want to welcome all of our City First locations City First anywhere and everyone watching online you are in the right place a big hello to our Cape Coral family and all the guys watching at God Behind Bars and everyone at a seat in our Spring Creek location. Paige, you know, there's one more group of people that we've yet to acknowledge. Uh, we have our City First Leadership College Woo! students in the house. It's the first day of an incredible year and we're so excited and expecting to see what God's gonna do through you this year. Now, let's take a few moments and talk about what's happening around here at City First. 21 Days of Prayer is happening right now. It's already been an incredible few weeks as we have been focusing a little more on prayer together. It's not too late to jump in. You can follow along on our app or on our website. Sunday, August 28th is our back to school bash. As we kick off a brand new year, we want you to bring your whole family for inflatables, food trucks, free treats, and more. September is right around the corner, which means at the movies, which is my favorite time of the year. Get ready for an unforgettable journey through some of our favorite movies as we discover some biblical truths that can apply to our everyday lives. And there will be interactive scenes, photo ops, characters, giveaways, what? and more. Make sure you invite your friends, your family, your coworkers, everyone you know. For more information on all things City First, make sure to download our brand new City First app. Lastly, if you have a small child in service, we have a family room and a mother's room designed just for you. Well, before we continue in our service, we want to celebrate and highlight how we were able to impact our communities in Jesus' name. Check it out. Hey, City First fam. I am on location at Texas Roadhouse and it has been an amazing week for Love Week as we have had the opportunity to bless our city, both in Rockford and in the Cape Coral area. It has been so cool to partner with local organizations and be a blessing. We have fed over 200 first responders through the generosity of Texas Roadhouse and Texas Tonys. In the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area, we were able to partner with one child to provide supplies and assemble birthday bags for children. We were also able to provide lunch for local teachers as they prepare and get ready to go back to school. At our Spring Creek location, we were able to partner with Rock House Kids and provide a meal to bless over 40 teenagers. We teamed up with the Rockford Rescue Mission to serve at their food program and thrift store this week. We helped out at the Rockford Pregnancy Care Center organizing and cleaning their facility. This is just a few highlights of some of the amazing things we were able to do this week. Thank you, City First Church, for serving your hearts out and blessing our community this week. Back to you, Cam and Paige. Hey, nice shirt. You copied me though. Uh, I wore better. Well, anyways, uh, we just wanna say how incredible. Thank you to everyone in City First for jumping into our love week. Let's continue to make an impact in Jesus' name right where you're at, loving where you live. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. It's a great day to be in church. And now let's get ready to lean in as we hear a message from our senior pastor, Jeremy DeWert. <laughs> All right, come on, put your hands together for all God is doing here at City First Church at all our locations. Man, so much, so much. We are so grateful to God. Welcome to church. I want to take a moment and welcome everyone at all of our physical locations, as well as everyone joining us online right now. And Jen and I just got back from our summer break, and I want to tell you, we could not be more happy to be back in church. I want to tell you. Now, we've been with you online, all right? So we've been here, but, but you know what? To be back physically with you is just something that's super special. And before I jump into my message, I want to take a moment and I want to celebrate all of the students and families that are beginning today a part of the City First Leadership College. Come on, give it up. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say they're my favorite. <laughs> 
And the reason why is back in 1993, I began this program. I began that ministry that is now called the City First Leadership College. And literally, we have seen through the decades, we've seen students come from all over the world, literally all over the world, and be sent out as world changers. So I just want to say to those of you that are in the front few rows here, welcome on behalf of Jen and myself. It is going to be a phenomenal year. We're going to see God move in your life for the next nine months. And I just want to challenge you to be open to what God wants to do and he is going to blow your mind in a good way. And by the time that your parents and family and friends come back to pick you up, they are going to see a new you. I believe that with all of my heart. So you know what? One more time. Come on, give it up for our Leadership College students. I also want to take a moment and I want to just celebrate all of our city first young adults that are going off to college, all right? Because this is one of the weekends before many of them are traveling, some of them near, some of them far. And we just want to take a moment and celebrate you and say that City First is always your home. And you know what, you can still dial in and come in on weekends, online, and be a part of this, but we believe that, guess what, when you go to this university or college or wherever you're going, I believe that God is going to use you in that space and in that place, and that God is going to give you a bright future. So one more time, give it up for our young adults that are going off to college, right? Now, we, we prayed a lot, we've clapped a lot, we've had a lot of stuff going on, I realize. But uh, before I jump into this, I really do want to pray for our young adults, whether they're in the leadership college or going off to college. Let's just pray a prayer of blessing, all right? Heavenly Father, I pray for all of the CFLC students. I pray for all of the City First young adults that are heading off to college in this next few weeks, in this next season. God, protect them. I pray that you would move in them. I pray that, Lord God, that the fire inside of them, that relationship they have with you, would burn bright. And that, Lord, that you would continue to fan that flame. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would lead them and guide them. And that this would be the best season of their life thus far. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, listen, uh, we're in this series called Love Where You Live, and uh, we are not only talking about loving the actual physical place where you live, but more importantly, we're talking about bringing Jesus' love into the physical place where you live, all right? And uh, sometimes, I was thinking about this on break, life seems kind of random. Now, when you think about this, uh, think about, have you ever thought about, like, how you got to where you're at right now? Like, like, really, how did you get to where you're at? These are a bunch of little decisions you make or, or little relationships you form or friendships that kind of come in and out of your life or opportunities, open doors or whatever. I mean, it seems kind of random, right? Or how did you meet the people that are the closest friends in your life? How did you meet? You might say, well, it's just kind of random. We met each other. We were, you know, at this, you know, working out together or we were at church together or life group or, you know, we were at school or whatever. It just kind of seems random. Or how did you land in the job you're in right now? And some of you are like, oh, that's super random. I went, I went to college to be a lawyer and I, instead I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm over here in another field. Or, or, or maybe you say, I, I don't even know how I ended up in this job. It just kind of happened, you know, it was kind of random. Or, or think about this, that you were sitting next to that girl in that college class, and now decades later, you're married. That's super random, isn't it? In fact, City First Leadership College? Okay, I won't go there. All right, anyway. <clears throat> Somebody like, oh, Jesus, no, not yet. Parents are like, uh, 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 all right. Or, or, you know, you were in a random conversation with a friend, and they mentioned, they're like, yeah, I heard such and such company is hiring, and so you put in an application, and all of a sudden you've been working there now for years. Or, or, or maybe you had a friend that was interested in a sport, and now you're on that team, like you're a big fan of that sport. Or maybe someone said something to you like, hey, there's this thing called a leadership college in Rockford, Illinois, a part of City First, a multi-site church, and all of a sudden, now you're here. In fact, how many of you, just raise your hand, how many of you, you would have not predicted that you're sitting here today a year ago? Like a year ago, right? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, yeah. See, see, right? You're like, random. And now here you are, right? Or, or maybe like you had an idea for, you know, a business and, 
and it was a random idea, and all of a sudden you started to build a business off of it. Or, or maybe you watched a YouTube video on mountain biking, and now you've spent an obnoxious amount of money on that hobby. It's super random. Or maybe, maybe you are just kind of surfing through Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or whatever, and you came across this social media clip, and it caught your eye, and you got curious about faith, and now all of a sudden here you are, a part of City First Church. Super random, right? And in, in the moment, in the moment, it seemed like, like it was very uneventful, but that moment changed the trajectory of your entire life, right? I remember decades ago, I remember going to a youth and young adult church service here at this church and looking across the room, and there was this girl that had really short hair, kind of like Roxette. You remember the band Roxette, any of you? Okay. Roxette, some of you are like, you're old, Jer. Anyway, okay. But anyway, this girl named Jenny Johnson caught my eye. I thought, well, oh, she's kind of cute. And so I came back. And then eventually, the next Valentine's Day, I decided to send her roses. Now, at that point, I was balling. I was making 50 bucks a week as an intern here. And I spent like $49 on roses. And I asked her to go out. She randomly said yes. Fast forward almost three decades later, or actually a little over three decades later, and now we're married, we have this amazing family, we are humbled and honored to run a world-changing church, we made thousands of memories together, random, super, super random, my whole life, listen, my whole life was changed because I went to a church service and a girl by the name of Jenny Johnson caught my eye. And the same with you, right? Life is full of randomness, randomness. But can I ask this? Are these moments truly random? Really? Like, like if you're a Christ follower, let me just put this out there. Could there be, could there be a hidden strategy, a hidden agenda behind all these random connections and moments and decisions and interests? Could there be something more to it? Like, for example, if you're a follower of Jesus, could there be a master architect that maybe is behind it all and you think it's just random, but he's taking all these random moments, these choices that we make, and he's trying to guide us to a divine purpose? Could it be bigger than what we think? Like, you thought it was random, but it was God. You thought it was random, but it was the leading of the Holy Spirit. You thought it was random, but yet it was by design. Isn't that interesting? Like, like, what if there was a reason behind where you live and where you go to school and where you work? Let me just say, how about if there was a bigger strategy, there was a bigger reason, like the God of the universe gave us latitude to make decisions every day, but yet he is directing us and he wants us to leverage this one and only life, our time, our resources, our relationship for something bigger than the randomness that we see. You know what, I believe this. I believe that you have been divinely led to a specific city to live in a specific neighborhood and to be in a specific job or school for a divine purpose. Now, some of you are like, I don't even like my job. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not saying it's your forever job. But what I'm saying is, is while you're in it, there's purpose. And maybe it's not random like you thought. Like maybe, maybe there's actually something strategic behind it. It talks about in the book of Acts. This is a book that's dedicated to the acts or the actions of the first century church. And it says this in chapter 17. From one man, he, meaning God, created all the nations throughout the whole earth. So in other words, God used Adam from one man. He created all the nations of the whole earth. He decided beforehand. Okay, there's a plan. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall. Do you know that God's in charge of the nations? We think a prime minister or a president or a dictator. No, 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 no. God is bigger than all that. Beforehand, he decides when they rise and when they fall. And then listen to this. He determined their boundaries. In other words, the space their life occupies. 
See, here's the truth. The truth is that God determines when we live. You didn't determine that. When we live, he determines where we live. Now, we have a little bit of maybe choice in that, but he determines it. At the end of the day, though, we determine how we live. So today I want to talk about this, how we are to live, how we are to live. In this Love Where You Live series, I want to talk about how we are to live. One of the things that Jen and I do uh, pretty frequently, it's about every other week or every third week, is that um, we uh, meet with the Leadership College students and we allow them to ask us any question they want. Now, I'm not saying I have all the answers or Jen has all the answers. Sometimes we're like, I don't know. But they could ask any question. They could ask about God. They could ask about family, about church, about culture, or whatever else. And we just spend about an hour and a half, about every two weeks, just discussing their questions. One question comes up every single year. It will come up again this year. It's worded different, but it always has this as the core. How do I figure out the will of God for my life? And you know what? That's not just a 19-year-old question or a 21-year-old question. That could be a 41 or a 91-year-old question, all right? Because all of us get to a place in life where we're like going, how do I determine God's will? How do I know where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do, right? And it's actually a really, really good question. So it's a complex answer, especially kind of when you drill down. It's a little bit more complex, but I'm going to keep it at 30,000 foot today, Okay. The 30,000-foot answer to how you determine or know the will of God for your life. You ready? You ready? Live like Jesus. Now, some of you are super overwhelmed or underwhelmed with that, uh, with that answer. You're kind of like, I was hoping for a little bit more than that, Jer. Like, I need to know whether I take this job or don't take this job, or whether I date this person, not date this person, if I go do this, not do this, whatever. I mean, I get that. But I'm going to keep it at 30,000 foot for a moment. Live like Jesus. That's the will of God. You know, um, if you're a lawyer, you're to live like Jesus in the courtroom, outside of the courtroom. If you're a teacher, you're to live like Jesus in the classroom, in the break room, outside the classroom, outside the school. If you're a business owner, you are to do business with Jesus ethics. You're to live like Jesus. If you're in the trades, whether you're on the work site or wherever you're at, you're to live like Jesus. If you are a student, whether you're in the classroom, whether you're studying behind your laptop, whether you are at home, in the dorm, wherever you're at, you are to live like Jesus. Sounds super simple, right? Super hard to do. It really is. You see, if you want to know what a divine purpose is for your life and how to discover that at work or in life, you try to live like Jesus in the environments that God has you in. That's, that's as simple as it gets, but it's difficult, and here's the reason why. Jesus was counterculture and also many times counterintuitive. In other words, he didn't do things the way that we sometimes want to do things. And it is not easy to live like Jesus for any of us, including me. All right. Some of you think, oh, you're a pastor. It's easy for you to live like you. No, I'm a human just like you. It is hard to live like Jesus. I want to live like Jeremy. I don't want to live like Jesus. All right. In fact, I'll tell you one of the hardest places for me to live like Jesus is when I'm driving. Can I get a big amen? In fact, yesterday I was driving four and a half hours from northern Wisconsin back to Rockford, Illinois, and I will tell you, most of the time, 90% of the time, I had a hard time living like Jesus. I'm like, get out of my way, why did you cut me off? I mean, right? And, and, and I will tell you, nothing will make you want to lose your salvation more than someone cutting you off. And I will tell you that by God's grace, I didn't tell anybody they were number one, I, I didn't do any of that kind of stuff, all right? By God's grace. <laughs> a couple years ago, I was driving here in Rockford, and I pulled up behind this car, and I took a picture of it. I laughed out loud, actually. I said, get off my King James Version for a donkey. Uh, before I inflate your airbags, City First Church. <laughs> I was like... I literally laughed out loud. I literally laughed out loud. I was like, oh my gosh, pulled out my phone, took a picture real quick. I don't know if this would be categorized as driving like Jesus or living like Jesus, but I also get it. I get it, all right? I get it. I really do. 
I think they're just being obvious for what many of us think, all right? So here's the thing. Every person who is a follower of Jesus is in a process of trying to live like Jesus. We're all in a process, okay? So I said at the beginning, you might have just found faith in Jesus. Um, you might be at the beginning of your journey. Uh, some of you, you're, you're in the middle. Um, some of us are maybe in it a few decades, but can I tell you something? None of us are ever done. We're never done with the process. I don't care if you're 91 years old in the house today, you ain't done with the process of trying to live like Jesus because there's still areas of your life that are still you and not enough Jesus, right? I mean, am I the only one believing that? Can I get an amen on that, right? All right? So we're all in a process, but here is what Jesus said, and I love this paraphrase that is found in Matthew. He's speaking to his followers, but he's speaking to us today also. What is the will of God? Well, he says this, let me tell you why you are here. Okay, let, let's just take a moment and live in that for a moment. If Jesus, the God of the universe, is speaking, why are you here? We should probably be listening, all right? Ready? This is what he said. Why are you here? You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. I know some of you are like disappointed with his answer. You want to be like, well, I want to know if I'm supposed to be an architect or not. Or you want him to answer whether you're supposed to live in this place or that place or buy this home or, or, or go to this area or marry that person. And I understand those are all choices of life. But again, Jesus is keeping it at 30,000 feet. And he's saying, why are you here? To be like salt. To bring out the God flavor in this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? Oh, that's a powerful line. You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. Hey, to every young adult that is going off to college right there, you're to be light on that campus, to bring out the God colors on that campus. You hear that? God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, don't you think, or you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. You hear that? By opening yourself to others, you prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. So listen, in other words, the reason why you are here, the reason where you are at at this moment is simply to live like Jesus in your neighborhood, at your college, in your community, at your school, in your job, at the grocery store, at Pilates class. You are to live like Jesus. You see, now, now again, why? Because you bring flavor in a culture that is very bland. You bring light in a culture that is very dark. Like, we got to ask ourselves this question. How will people discover Jesus if they don't attend church? And I put yet. But still, how are they going to discover Jesus? Like, I know some of you are looking at me going, well, that's your job. You're the pastor. And I'm like, no, I'm actually not the one doing the heavy lifting. You are. Where you go to work, where you go to school, your neighborhood, your health club, your coffee shop, they see you. They're not listening to me. They don't see me. They see you. So how did they discover Jesus? Here's the answer. By seeing the difference in you. Not just seeing you, seeing the difference in you. In other words, you live different. I put it this way, that you and I are the handshake of God. I love that. You're the handshake of God. You're the one making the introduction through your life. Basically, you're saying, God is real because I have been changed by God. And so, therefore, I'm living different. And how does that how is that introduction made? How is that handshake made? Well, it's through your words and through your actions. And I would tell you that probably the greater weight is on your actions. Because people can talk, 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 okay? Words are cheap, as they say, but actions really prove your theology. Actions prove your theology. So, so here's the thing. Your values are different. Your convictions are different. 
your business practices are different, your words that you speak are different, your priorities are different, your outlook is different, your social media is different, hello? Turn to the person next to you and say, he's talking to you. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's, that's a nerve, I realize. You know, WWJD, would Jesus, you know, what would Jesus do? I think WWJP, what would Jesus post? <laughs> think that through, all right? <laughs> your generosity is different. You handle your money, your time, and your resources differently. The followers of Jesus for 2,000 years have taken this very seriously, the true followers of Jesus. You can go way back, way, way back to the very, very beginning. I'm talking first century church, and you will see that there is a difference in Christ followers, that people that were Christ followers were different from their culture. In fact, um, there's a guy by the name of Alan Creter. He has now uh, passed away, passed away about maybe five years ago or so, a Ph.D., very intelligent man. He spent a lot of his life uh, researching the early church. In fact, he was given um, over a million dollars of funding money from a, uh, from a fund uh, to be able to research the early church. I mean, that's a lot of money, over a million dollars to research a topic, um, especially in theology. And he gathered all these PhDs together, and he wrote some books. And then one of his books called uh, The Patient Ferment of the Early Church um, the Improbable Rise of Christianity in the Roman Empire, which, by the way, that, that, that uh, subtitle is very true. Christianity should not be here. It really, I mean, all the odds were stacked against it, especially for the first almost 300 years that it was illegal to be a Christian. And, and it started in basically the Roman Emperor, Empire, excuse me, and, and in the Middle East, obviously, where Jesus lived. And it should, have, it should have died out. After Jesus left, it should have died out, and it didn't. It thrived. It grew. It's still here today. Billions of people are followers of Jesus. And I'm telling you, this is not just a religion. Religions don't change people. Relationship changes people. A relationship with Jesus. Well... Dr. Creter, he basically wrote this, and, and, and listen to this. Outsiders, meaning those that were outside of faith. Outsiders could see the results of the spiritual formation, but not the formation itself. In other words, what does that mean? They saw these Christians living different, but they didn't know what made the difference. Like, they didn't see the difference in in, in its formation, but rather instead they saw the result of the spiritual formation, all right? That's huge, it's huge. So, so this was one of the reasons why the, the early church spread like wildfire. It's because those that followed Jesus actually lived different, although the people on the outside of faith didn't know why. They were just curious. They're like, wait. And it said this, it said that basically, um, you know, the spiritual formation happened privately, secretly, out of the public's eye. Their Christian habitus, now that's a $10 academic term. It basically means lifestyle, all right? Their Christian habitus, not their worship services, would be their loudest sermon that pointed people to Jesus. Okay, can I tell you something? What we're doing right now, listening to a message, what we just got done doing, singing songs, all good, all important, all biblical, all necessary, and something you should do. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about gathering together. Different sermon, all right? I'm not going to go off on that. What we are doing is important, and we need to do it. But what we're doing is not making much of a difference outside of these four walls. I know some of you are like going, I don't want to clap. No, okay. 50 yards down the road, we just got done singing a song. Did it really change that person's life? No, it didn't. That's why we as Christians must gather, but then scatter. We are not just to gather. Some people are like, I just want to have church services all day long. They're awesome. It's like, yes, and you'll be incredibly ineffective, and you will not be living in the will of God because we are not to be in church all day long. We're to meet in church and be changed and then go out and change the world. Do you hear that? See, it is important. Worship changed us. Worship is, is, is a way of magnifying God. The sermon hopefully changes us, 
all right? But then the real change in this world happens the next six days after you leave here. You hear that? Because we can have heaven in here and it's still hell out there. So why don't we bring a little heaven out of here into the hell out there and be pockets of heaven in our workplaces, in our schools, and places like that. And so he's saying it was not the worship services that created the revival. It was instead the difference, the difference. It would be the loudest sermon that pointed people to Jesus. It would be their everyday life that would make outsiders curious about Jesus, how early Christians responded to pain, hardship, persecution, and crisis became evangelistic tools leading outsiders to Christ. You know what that insinuates? It means that Christians go through pain and hardship and persecution and crisis, but we respond different. Like we should have responded different during the COVID crisis, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? I don't, I'm not going to grade us on that, but I'm just saying that is kind of a rhetorical kind of statement, all right? That we should respond different to what's going on in politics. We should respond different to what's going on in culture. We should respond different to what's going on in our workplace and in our school. Again, different, different, different. In fact, it says it's how they conducted business and treated a sick neighbor that made them stand out. For example, pagans would observe Christians who are economically compassionate and say, look. Like the pagans would look and go, Wow, they're different, and they became curious. So how do you live like Jesus? I'm going to FedEx this because I'm running out of time. But I'll tell you what. You put God first. You uh, forgive often. I know that's a hard one, isn't it? These are all traits of Jesus, by the way. You're compassionate. You're full of prayer. You have faith. You try to live with humility. You live with generosity. You serve others, and you love even your enemies. All things that Jesus did, and we're to try to live like that. Now, you see that list right there? And I know some of you are like going, Ugh, I have so far to go. And I get it. I do too. I mean, seriously, I do too. We all do. But here's the good news. Ready? Our world is so dark, even the littlest progress you make in becoming more like Jesus gets people's attention. Even the littlest progress. So just try. It's not you anyway. It's the Holy Spirit in you. You just got to kind of, in a sense, allow him to do what he wants to do, all right? It doesn't take much salt to create flavor. It does not take much light to chase off the darkness. Good evening. How are you? Is this Miss Kirby? Yes, it is. Hi, Miss Kirby. This is Stacy Vaughn. You, this morning you put a prayer card in our prayer box at our store. I just want to let you know we prayed for you. So uh, what can you tell me about it that I can pray more about? Well, I'm going to just say this. I do have a job. Okay, good. Praise God. But, you know. It's not what you want. Yeah, but, I, but I'm thankful. And, and you got family and kids at home. Well, the good news is you're not alone. Lord, we ask a blessing on Miss Kirby, Lord, as she has asked for some family needs, Lord, they come together and bring themselves together in their lives. And Lord, we just thank you again for this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you, dear. Bless you, dear. God bless you. We're grateful for every prayer request that comes through that store, every time we have a time to share and pray with people. So, praise God. Yeah, so the prayer box that we, we put up there was a small little tiny plastic box that uh, insignificant to the room. It wasn't about our business. It was about people's hearts. And... and um, when people would walk up to the prayer box and they would see the cards that we made, it would be funny to watch them because they'd be like, and then put the prayer card. And if, if I got a chance to see that, sometimes I would walk up and say, you didn't do that in secrecy to God. I said, he already knew what you were gonna do before you did it. <laughs> but I said, you know, here's something I want you to think about. 
Did you put a prayer request in there for God to answer your prayer or did you just put it in there to vent? And most people will say, well, there's a problem that I can't resolve and I don't know what to do. And I said, you put it in the right spot. God's got that. Upper prayer room. <laughs> These are some of the prayer cards from uh, this year and last year, part of them last year. This is another box from last year. Uh, I'll go back about nine, nine or ten years ago. My uh, partner at the time, we talked about uh, people coming through the door and and uh, waiting on people back and forth. And some people had some heartbreaking stories and it's like, you know, what can we do? How, how can we change that? So uh, we, we put a prayer box on the counter and uh, we, we, we made a little handmade card of things that people would ask questions about. And we, we copied them in the copy machine and the people were filling out and put it in the box and put them in the box. And it was like, wow, this is kind of exciting. Pray over them probably half an hour, 45 minutes. And then the next day we be began calling people, letting them know that we prayed for them. You know, that told me right then and there that there was a lot more to this place of work than what I saw. A purpose that was beyond my understanding. This is what God wants us to do in our relationship with the church, to love one another. And the only way that's gonna happen is if you get out of your comfort zone, move out of your life that you think that you're in, and, and, and turn your life over to God completely. So, um, not for everybody, I have to admit, because some people aren't willing to let go yet, but once you realize that your change of life is about God, you now will see a new life in you that you never felt before. Your eyes are differently looking. You help people that you didn't help before. You, you say kind words that you probably wouldn't say before. You change your vocabulary, you change your spirit, you change your, your laughter, everything changes. I'm so grateful, God is good. That's it right there. Just live like Jesus or, or try. That's the thing. You're not going to be perfect. A lot of times people say, I don't want to live like Jesus because I'm going to fail. Yes, you will. You will fail. You have good days and bad days. You're going to be more like him on certain days and less like him on others. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, it's for us to go, Jesus, I need your help to live like you. <laughs> I need your help. So here's the altar call for today. Some of you are like going, what does that mean? Well, that's kind of an old-fashioned term for kind of saying response. All right, here it is. Ready? Go live like Jesus now. <laughs> like this week. Like when you go to lunch after church and it comes time to tip the person that gave you bad service. You're like, oh, now you're getting real. <laughs> How would Jesus tip? How would Jesus practice their profession, his profession? How would Jesus act at the gym? How would Jesus act towards that neighbor that drives you crazy because they don't mow their lawn enough? And they let it grow to be a foot long, and then you're like, okay, what would Jesus do? See, see, it's super simple, but this is what I know. You are salt, and you are light, and you're to bring out the God flavor and the God color in your world, and I am too. So can we ask for God to give us the ability, the strength, the wisdom to know how to do it? Why don't we bow our heads, close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I... 
I ask you to give us strength to do it. It's hard to live like you, Jesus. But it is the best life. Not just because you'll bless us, but because people will see the difference and they'll want to know you. Help us all, young, old, those that are in career training, all the way up, those that are retired. Help us to be the God flavor and the God color in our worlds. Before I go ahead and say amen, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you say, I've been listening to this and the whole time I want to live like Jesus, but I don't even know him. Well, hey, here's a great opportunity before we leave. If you want to make Jesus the leader and the forgiver of your life, which means that you put him in charge and that he will forgive you of all what the Bible says is sin or your wrongdoing. If you want heaven as your home someday, if you say, Jesus, you take the steering wheel of my life. These random moments have randomly landed me in this place where I'm listening to this message. Well, can I tell you there's a divine architect that wants this moment to happen so that he can have a relationship with you. You're not here by mistake. Even if you're watching online, you're not here by mistake. And if you say with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to make Jesus the leader and the forgiver of my life, just go ahead and just raise your hand and put it right back down. Just before God, say, that's me. Yeah, there's people putting their hands up. Can we all say this prayer in conclusion together? Can we say it together whether you raised your hand or you didn't? Jesus, Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died for me. I want to live for you. Thank you for your unconditional love. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Well, hey, if you just made that decision to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life, congratulations. That is one of the best decisions you can ever make. And we've got a lot of free resources for you. So we would love for you to download the City First app, and then you can click on there, get connected, and that will help get you all of those resources. We want to partner with you on your faith journey. That's right. We want to hear about it. We've also got a resource to put in your hands called Next Steps. Yes. It's basically, what are the next steps about now that you've started this faith journey? And we've got another thing that we've got yep. right after Next Steps. After you finish reading that Next Steps book, join us for Growth Track. Yes. So Growth Track will help you figure out how God has wired you yes. and kind of walks you through the gifts and passions that he's given you yeah. and how you can plug in and kind of in turn walk that out. That's in right. Your faith That's right. And Growth Track restarts at the beginning of each month. Yep, so it's only a four week course, but it is. And it's so insightful. It gives you a little insight too into what, what's happening at the church. Who are we? What are we about? And also, what are you about? How has God created you? So again, four weeks, it's available in person and online. And that restarts at the beginning, the first Sunday of every month. That's right. Also, if you watch us exclusively online, you are a part of our City First Anywhere, Anywhere. family. So right. we would love to know you yes. and to get to know you and to help you take those next steps in your faith journey. And the easiest way to do that is to let us know by downloading the app, going to the Explore tab, yep. and then hit City First Anywhere button. And that lets us know who you are and, you know, Plus, you get the, the app that's downloaded, that's too. That's right. There's tons of, great, brand new app. tons of great information in the app yes. about what we're continuing with our 21 days of prayer. We're in, I believe this is week three, right? Week three. Headed I think we're on day 14. week three. Yep, yeah, that's day right. 14 so today. There's some great resources yep. for you there. One more you week You can left. stay connected there. Yep. We're, uh, we're excited. We just want to know you're here. We don't want you to disappear in the craziness yep. and chaos. And that's of our what worlds. I love about our brand new app is it allows you to have devotionals right. every single day. We have a new devotional. You can journal with other people. Yep. And you can also ask for prayer on the app. There's a prayer button at the top. You can pray for others and you can also request prayer for yourself. And we don't want you to live life alone. We don't want you to do church alone. We're meant to be in community with each other. That's right. We hope you guys enjoyed yep. Superhero Sunday. Yay. Yeah. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. 
Thank you for joining us. We hope you've been encouraged today. We say this all the time. We are not just a friendly church, but a family church. And we want you to know we are here for you. If you need prayer for anything, we would love to come alongside you and pray with you. Simply visit our app and tap the Get Connected button. You'll also find resources on how to take your next steps in your faith journey. Here at City First Church, we are passionate about generosity. And when we give, we are able to impact people globally in the name of Jesus bringing practical help and hope. If you were encouraged today, we would love to invite you to partner with us financially to give back to God through City First Church. Giving is simple. Click the link in the description or head on over to the app. We're so grateful for your generosity. Lastly, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in here at City First Church. We'll see you next time.